Hi, my name is Damian Quartz, and I'm going to demonstrate for you Evaluator, which is an app that I released on HIO recently. Um, there's a standalone version and a VST version. And uh, what I want to do is start out by just pressing play so you can hear what this sounds like. So uh, let me just explain basically what's going on here. Uh, this is an app that runs a program to generate sound and you can write that program. It generates the sound by running the program for every audio sample that needs to be generated and then converting the output of the program to a negative one-to-one -one floating point value that is then sent on to the audio system. The program itself is running on unsigned integers. There's only one type of value in the program and that's it. And so the output of the program uh, can be anywhere from zero to a very large number uh, and that needs to be converted somehow. So the way that we do that is we use this bits setting to uh, set the W variable which is currently 256 for 8 bits and the output of the program is wrapped to that value. And then that wrapped value is the value that's mapped from negative one to one. Other variables in the auto window here you'll see is our t. And t is incremented every time that the program is run. You can change the value of t in a program, as you can see here. But the next time the program is run, it will be reset to be the next incremented value because this is uh, tracked independently. m is how many milliseconds t represents and Q is how many 128th notes T represents, taking into account what the current tempo is. So our BPM is 120 right now, so that's gonna control how quickly Q increments. If we set this to 60, it will increment twice as slowly. If you're running in a DAW, there's not gonna be a BPM setting. It will pull that from the DAW's uh, current tempo. Uh, similarly, in a DAW, you won't have this little transport here that lets you pause and unpause and stop and play uh, because we use the DAW's play state to do that. Our run mode right now is continuous, which means that as long as I'm unpaused, it's going to be generating sound. But we can also use a run mode called with MIDI, which means that it will only generate while I'm in play mode and I have an active MIDI note. So I have a little keyboard plugged in, so if I press a key, it's going to start playing. You can see that there's this additional setting MIDI note on sets t equal to zero. If I have that checked, then every time I press a MIDI note, regardless of whether I'm in continuous or with MIDI, it's going to reset t to zero. So you can hear that here. Whereas if I don't have that checked, T just picks up from where it left off when a new MIDI note comes in. So uh, just quickly I want to show you the preferences window. Um, this is something you might need to open if you don't have any sound when the program launches. Uh, sometimes it'll pick the incorrect input device or output device and you won't have any sound and you can fix that by coming in here and choosing the correct one. You can change the sampling rate if you want to. Um, a lot of these small programs that you might find on the web if you do a search for byte beat we're designed to run with a 8,000 hertz sampling rate. So if you want to have it sound exactly the same as what's in like a YouTube video or something, you could change that here and then copy that program in and set bits to eight, most likely. If you have a MIDI device plugged in, you can choose it here. And in my case, I have a little nano key USB MIDI keyboard. So that's what I'm using to send MIDI. You don't have to have a MIDI device plugged in in order to use the program. Uh, and the computer keyboard even has the keys, some of the keys on it are mapped to MIDI notes. So if I press the Z key, you'll see I get N equals 48. It's a little bit janky because of some of the limitations of the framework I'm using, but hopefully I'll be able to improve that in the future. So um, as you saw, there's a scope down here, and this lets us play with the size of the window. So we can look at a larger or smaller portion of the waveform that's being generated, depending on what we want to see. 
Another basic control is the volume control, which I can use to just turn things down or up. Pretty straightforward. So let's get into how do you write programs for Evaluator. The language is very similar to C. Uh, it contains all of the same, uh, well, most of the same operators for doing arithmetic and bit shifting operations. But then it also contains a lot of additional unary operators that make generating sound a little bit easier. Um, what it doesn't have is any kind of control structures like if statements or for loops or while loops, and there's no functions. So the most important thing that you have to do and is required for a program to compile at all is to assign something to the output. We use these audio input output access brackets. And this means assign this value to all outputs. Uh, in this version of it, Evaluator, there's only two inputs and two outputs. Um, you can individually address them by using zero and one here. Um, but for the most part, you're gonna just wanna output mono. All right, so just as a simple example here, we're gonna start from the top. I'm gonna go through each of these operators. So the F operator allows you to take a MIDI note and convert it to a number that can be uh, used to multiply against T to kind of create an oscillator that is at the same pitch as that MIDI note. Um, this will only work directly if you use 16 bits. If you change the bits, it's going to basically change the octave of the note that you get. So if I unpause now and I press key on my MIDI keyboard, we will hear a C. And up an octave. I could do a little scale. So that's what that's for. You notice we are making a saw, saw wave here, excuse me. And if we want to turn that saw wave into a sine, we can use the sine operator. If we want to make it a square wave, we can use this hash symbol. And if we wanted to make it a triangle, we would use the T operator. Now one thing to note is that these are basically doing remapping operations, sine and, and square and triangle. And so uh, their behavior depends on whatever the current bit setting is. So like the simplest case is a, in a square, the number that it's operating on, it's going to look at whether that number is less than half of W or greater than half of W. Um, and I believe it does a modulo first and it'll give you a zero or a W minus one. And that's how we generate our square wave from the saw wave, basically snapping the low values to the bottom, the high values to the top. Uh, triangle works similarly where it's sort of taking what it expects to be a saw wave and remapping it to a triangle and same with sign. Okay, so let's say we just want to make some noise. We can use the W operator, I'm sorry, the R operator. And that will sound like this. It's going to take whatever it's operating on and generate a random value between zero and that number. The next one is the V operator, and the V operator allows you to get at the knobs up here that are labeled V0 through V7. So one simple way to look at what's going on there is we can put V0 into a watch and now when I move the knob you're going to see that update. Uh, so a good example showing that working is uh, frequency modulation down here. It's pretty simple. We have a saw wave, we're adding a low frequency sine wave to it and the result is you get something that sounds like a frequency modulated saw wave. If I increase V0, it gets a little wilder. Uh, 
Uh, so you'll notice that if I change the knob while it's running, we don't get a very smooth transition for the, the frequency modulation. And that's because I'm not, uh, the program isn't written to do that. In order to get smooth frequency changing, you basically need to sort of like manage the, the step of your oscillator uh, yourself rather than just multiplying by T. So uh, the next thing I wanted to show was the MIDI pitch sweep example, which demonstrates using the C operator. C operator allows you to get the current value of MIDI CC messages. Um, so those are going to be between 0 and 127, uh, as far as what numbers those are. Uh, and in this case, we're getting C1, which is the mod wheel. So if I press key on my keyboard and then sweep and then press the mod wheel button, you see C1 sweeps up and down. And this program is written to turn that into a one octave sweep and pitch. The sweeping that's going on here, which you can see happening now, uh, that's just coming from the device that I'm using. So the program's not making that happen. Um, in my case, I have a small device that has a button. When I press the button, it changes that value over time. Similar to how if you had a physical wheel on a keyboard, you would slide it and have more analog control over the value. So finally, we have the at operator, which is for accessing a sort of large block of just generic memory. Uh, each memory address is an unsigned integer. So it's like uh, indexing into a very large array that you can kind of do whatever you want with. If we look at the memory sequence example, we see we're just putting fixed values into 0, 1, 2, 3. And then what we're doing is stepping this i variable every 16th note. So remember q is 128 notes divided by 32. It's going to give us 16th notes. And then mod 4 will make i wrap to 4. So I will be going 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then uh, we are going to output a saw wave. And we're going to add this interval that's stored in memory at whatever i is currently at. So it'll be at i, which i might be 0, it might be 1. We're going to add that to the MIDI note. So the MIDI note is our sort of base note for the arpeggio. And then this adds on to that. So when I play this, I'm going to get a little arpeggio. And take a look down here, you can see I and at I actually stepping to see what those. If I change the tempo, that will change the speed of arpeggiation, because Q is connected to that. OK, so to wrap up, I want to show one more example that I have over in Reaper. So I'm going to pull this over here. This is my DAW of choice. And this example uses the input coming into the program and modifies it and then sends it to the output. And what it's doing is uh, what's called a sample and hold, which uh, also is also known as bit crushing, is what most people probably know that as. But essentially how it works is it every X number of samples, which in this case is controlled by the V0 knob, that's what our S is. It grabs the current uh, sample coming in, assigns it to A, and then uh, for left channel, B for right channel, and then outputs A and B. And you can see here we have this R. R is going to be true if we want to grab an incoming sample, false if not. And if it's not true, then we're going to just grab the current value A and reassign it to itself. Uh, which means we'll be outputting the same value we always have. Uh, so the result is, get this drum break that's coming in. And you can see how, as I increase the length of the hold, things kind of get squared up here. And as I release it back down, it starts sounding like the original sample.
so that's about that. Uh, one more thing that I did want to mention is that when we're dealing with the ternary operator, you need to remember that it's not a branching ternary operator. And what that means is all parts are evaluated every time that that line of code is run in the program. So if you have an assignment happening, say, in this first part, then that assignment is going to happen every single time this line of code runs, regardless of whether the first part of the ternary is, is 0 or 1. So that's why we have this kind of strange construction where we assign to A either 0 or uh, bracket 0 or itself, because if we did A equals bracket 0 here, which we might think would work because of uh, the ternary jumping here, that's going to happen every single time the program is run. Um, the other thing to note is that these comparison operators less than and greater than, which unfortunately I left out of the language syntax, so I'll be fixing that in an update. These are going to evaluate to either 0 or 1, uh, depending on the results of that. Um, and so, as you can see, they, they can be used in an expression to assign a value to a variable. Um, and you can also use them directly here if you want to. You saw me using the load a lot. You can also save, which will grab this preset and save it to an FXP file. So if you're messing around in the standalone, let's say, and you like something and you want to bring it into the DAW to record it or to incorporate it into something else, then you can save that out as an FXP and load it in here, which is kind of nice. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, the link is down in the description. Uh, you can download this for totally free. It's a suggested donation of $2, but please don't feel like you need to do that if you don't want to or can't afford it. Uh, and I hope you have fun using it, and uh, post in the forum if you come up with cool uh, programs and stuff. Uh, it's always neat to see what people discover with these things. Thanks a lot, and bye.